Hello everyone, this is MJ. You are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today, I'm back from a European vacation and I've got a book haul. And remember before we get started, it helps, I know it does. So I hope everyone is doing well. Yes, this is the big thing that I really couldn't talk about. Um, uh, the Hubs and I went on our first vacation since the Pandy and it was chef's kiss. It was amazing. I can't even tell you how good it felt to travel. Um, we did London and uh, Paris. <sighs> I love both. I love both. And while I was there, I made sure to get some books, some yummy, yummy books. So I'm going to share with you what I was able to pick up. Um, I was able to connect with some of our fellow booktubers. So you may see a familiar face in here or something like that. Uh, but yes, we had a fantastic time. Uh, it Everything went off smooth. No travel hiccups, nothing like that just just amazing and the fact that i was able to squeeze some books home was even better now we were very restricted with our luggage we were kind of doing this european backpack style almost so i couldn't i wasn't able to buy as much as i wanted to but the things that i did buy i think are perfect um and significant and um i got gifted some books too which was awesome all right so let's just dive right in so how are you all doing how's your week been yeah, I'm dealing with um, jet lag today. Uh, got a good night's sleep, but I'm chugging the water and making sure that I uh, will be able to function for work tomorrow. Okay, so I knew going into this trip that I was going to go book shopping in London because charity shops, foils, water stones, um, Forbidden Planet, all of these places I know, chock full of books. Also, the used books, the secondhand bookstores. Oh, you guys, you guys are so blessed to have all of that. Um, where I live, nothing. I got a Barnes and Noble, that's it. So the first thing that we did was, where did we go first for books? Oh, charity shops. So um, we stayed north of London a little bit, um, in Northern London, I guess you would call it. And where our hotel was, I found two charity shops. So I decided to walk in. Now a charity shop is basically like walking into your grandma's closet. There's a little bit of everything. You've got some china, you've got some dishware, you have clothes. Um, all the way in the back, you've got books. Usually they'll have a bookshelf or them stacked up or something like that. So the two that I went in actually had a really nice selection of books. Um, one had a nice copy of uh, Animal Farm. Another had a nice copy of The Outsiders. I didn't feel like getting, I already have The Outsiders. I didn't feel really like buying Animal Farm. I was looking for other things. I saw Dan Brown. But there was nothing that really grabbed me. I was trying to find the vintage paperback books and there wasn't there wasn't many that um, were being offered. But it was fun just to shop and just to look for them. So that was like day one. See, then we ran into another friend. I'll put a picture here. And... I received this book. Now, I am really, really excited to read it. I've never read this before. And this is Girl, Woman, Other, Bernadine Ivaristo. This is um, the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlisted 2020. Uh, never, never read it, but this is highly recommended and this was a gift, so it makes it even more special. Um, this is Britain as you've never read it. This is Britain as it has never been told. From the top of the country to the bottom, across more than a century of change and growth and the struggle and life, Girl, Woman, Other follows 12 very different characters on an entwined journey of discovery. It is future, it is past, it is fiction, it is history. It is a novel about who we are now. Thank you, thank you so much for this copy, and I will treasure it, and I can't wait to read it. And that gift was a lovely present from Chatty. And I will leave Chatty's channel down below. In case you love fantasy or you love a little bit positivity, 
Chatty is the sweetest. And I'm telling you what, the camera, the camera does not do you justice, girl. You are beautiful. You are a beautiful, beautiful person. Okay. Then we hooked up with another friend and we went to, went to Forbidden Planet first. So this is Forbidden Planet in London. Um, this is the major store, I guess. And I'll tell you what, it does not disappoint. Um, huge, huge selection of books downstairs. Upstairs is all the Star Wars and the Funkos and all that stuff. Downstairs are the books, um, the games, the board games, the cards, all that. Uh, very, very nice selection of um, sci-fi and horror. No, actually, we went to a store before that, and I don't remember the name of it. But all of the copies were um, two books for seven pounds, and that's cheap. That's cheap. They had so many good books. Like I, that was the one store that I had to restrain myself because all I'm thinking is luggage. You don't have a lot of room in your luggage. You are not going to have a lot of room in your luggage. Like it needs to be iconic for you to bring it home. So I just kind of held off. Um, yeah. And that was with Gareth from Book Sounds and Other Magic. He was an awesome tour guide. We had so much fun. Okay, so then Gareth took us on a whirlwind tour and we went to uh, Forbidden Planet and then we went to Foils. Foils, oh my God, you guys and your foils. Foils is five floors tall. It's huge. It is just jam packed with books. I wish we had a Foils over here. Now, Foils did suck me in because they have, um, Mmm, lots of signed copies. And I saw this, and this one caught my eye. I've never heard of this author before. This is by Moira Fowley. This is Eyes, Guts, Throat, Bones. This is a book of short stories. Uh, and it is signed by the author. There are separate chapters, four separate stories. So we have Eyes, Guts, Throat, and Bones. Um, and there's different stories, uh, in each section. So I think I'm two stories in so far. I know I said I wasn't going to read them, but you know what? Rules are made to be broken. So I'm reading them and it's really, it's very, very enjoyable. Um, the first story really, really did grip me. First story was called such a pretty face and it was good. Um, so this, I don't know if you could see, yeah, they give you actually a nice, um, card there which is fantastic and foils you could get lost in oh my god we went up to their manga section oh, it's like a wing in a house like it's you don't, you don't even know where to look but i will say the hubs was thankful for seats because he is not a book shopper but he absolutely held my books like a good man and um waited patiently for me as well so also at foils I picked up a book that's been on my list for a long time, and that is Consumed by David Cronenberg. If you follow my channel, you follow me, you know I have a thing for David Cronenberg. I just think he's amazing. And um, this is one of his, this is one of his books. This is uh, his first novel. Cronenberg's first novel is so good, he should ditch his day job for Connoisseurs of Burroughs, Ballard, and DeLeo. Consumed as a delightful and unexpected smorgasbord. Hmm. As though Jean-Paul Sartre were dining with Hannibal Lecter. So I think it's a little bit of cannibalism. Yeah, we got some of that going in there. If you know Cronenberg, you know body horror. And um, I hope this does not disappoint. So uh, that is Consumed by David Cronenberg. Okay. Then... We went to a secondhand bookstore. Um, lots and lots and lots of things to pick from. They had a lot of the Executioner series. They had a lot of that style vintage paperback. Nothing that really called out to me. They had like one or two hardcovers that were for sale. But again, all I'm thinking about is you don't have a lot of space in your luggage and you need to make sure everything fits when you're coming home. So that was pretty much it for London. Then we went to Paris, walked around a lot of the shops in Paris. Um, all the books are in French. So, uh, I wasn't able to, um, I wasn't able to browse them as much as I would love, but there were 
of bookstore after bookstore after bookstore after bookstore after bookstore. It was magnificent, even just to see all of the books. So this trip really did fuel my love for um, the French language and French culture. And it's giving me a kick in the butt to really start learning French as a second language. So wish me luck. Wish me luck. I may like go down the route of getting myself a tutor and really um, just like practicing because I'm telling you, I'm coming back next year. I'm coming back to London and I'm coming back to Paris next year. A hundred percent. Okay. So while we were in Paris, of course I had to go to Shakespeare and Company. It's like the destination for book lovers that are um, American, expats, whatever you want to call us. So at, uh, at Shakespeare and Company, they have this wonderful little thing where you can buy a prepackaged book that has a book stamp in it. Um, they stamp all of their books. If, if you would like the, them to be stamped, it is just an ink stamped. It's not embossed or anything like that. And there's a bookmark in here too, but you don't know exactly what it is. So I'm going to save this for last. So we do have a true unboxing. Ooh. But they did have, Shakespeare and Company is interesting because you have to wait in line to go outside. The amount of customers are limited because they want to make sure that everyone has space. Everyone is able to um, browse with room and you're not shoulder to shoulder. So you're waiting a little bit to, to get in line. Once you are through the store, um, you see d different sections in, in different, um, rooms, shall we say. Now the horror and science fiction is mixed together, not a huge selection. I would say there's more science fiction than horror. Um, I spoke to a friend um, that we met up with and she said, yeah, she doesn't, she's not too sure exactly what it is about, um, f the French and horror, but there's not a lot of selection. So we'll see. And that was, um, Celeste from, uh, Bookbound Weirdo. Uh, we were able to meet up with her. Um, okay. So what I did get, <laughs> I picked up five vintage crime stories. I know, I know, but I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll start a new collection. Maybe I'll start, um, you know, reading a little more widely. Now I have avoided this genre for a long time for multiple reasons, but I think maybe I'm just going to dip, dip my toe in the water and see if I like it. So <laughs> I picked up 87th precinct. Uh, 87 pre precinct, um, books, mini little nuggets of crime stories. I thought this would be fun for during the summer, right? Now, I don't know what order these are in. I know there's a certain number, um, but they're all vintage and that's really cool. So this is from 1968 and you can see this one is, um, a sensational new 87th precinct mystery. The covers are really what drew me in. There's the first one. <laughs> and then on the inside, you can see the Shakespeare and Company stamp right there. And then they'll throw in a Shakespeare and Company uh, bookmark, which basically just has the store. Is that right? That's right. Basically just has a picture of the store. Yep. And people outside hanging out. And it's just, it's lovely. It really is lovely. So we've got this one. We've got, uh, bread. The titles are fun too. Here's bread. They were all so cheap. I couldn't say no. We've got, this one has a sticker on it. That's going to have to go. These are, um, some of these are from pan books. This is 1965. He who hesitates. We've got Doll. Doll is 1965. Just nice selection. And this one was my favorite cover. Um, this is Homicide Department. And this is 1968. Yep. Dum, dum, dum. What happened to her? 
Okay, so those are the books that I got from Shakespeare and Company. Now, as you can tell, this is a lot to cram in my luggage so far. <laughs> I had my carry-on bag stacked to perfection. It was organized to perfection. Um, this one I had actually in my luggage. Oh, I'm sorry, I have one more. I had in my luggage, and then this one was also in my luggage. So let's open it and see what it is. All right. If you have been to Shakespeare and Company, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's see. Ooh, The Confidential Agent by Graham Greene. I think that's going to be good. And there is a different bookmark in it. Yeah, this is a different Shakespeare and Company bookmark. You can see that. Mm -hmm. And there is a stamp in it as well. And you can see the stamp. I know it's cheesy. I don't care. I love it. I've never read Graham Greene, so I'm looking forward to that. Something different. And I love that it's a vintage book too. And this was from, do we know? 1965. So there you go. So here are All my books I put in my luggage when I came back from Europe. So, yes, it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful traveling. It's been wonderful meeting with friends. It's been fantastic just seeing the world again. This trip was a bucket list trip for me. Uh, and there's still so much that I want to see. So I am planning on going back next year. I already warned everyone. I said, if anybody wants to go, let me know. So that's where we are. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my European book haul. I hope you are all doing well. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others, so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video, which will be sooner rather than later. So until next time, everyone, goodbye for now. Au revoir.